Hi all, I have a very high computer states game to show you today. Leela had to try and at least draw this game with the mighty stockfish playing with the black pieces in order to be able to qualify for the super final against stockfish. So Leela at the start of this game was being chased by the Komodo chess engine and also Houdini in the event of a crash. Uh, Houdini would uh, also be uh, winning on tiebreak. But at the moment, if Leela lost this particular game, then on tiebreak, uh, Komodo would go through. So the first criteria, uh, number of crashes. Uh, the second criteria, uh, score against each other, I believe. So anyway, Komodo would go through if Leela lost. So what happened in this game? E4 from the mighty Stockfish. Stockfish beaten had beaten Leela once so far in this tournament. Uh, so Leela got, got a few draws though. So this is a very interesting test with the black pieces. So Sicilian defence. The opening book given the Sicilian Nidorf. What a classic opening to explore here. Bishop e3, e6. We have Queen f3. More usual on chess-based live book, f3 is played quite a lot here. For example, this continuation is pretty popular. Something like this has been seen quite a bit before. Queen f3 has been used before. We have knight bd7, bishop e2, queen c7. This is the end of the book given to both. And Stockfish chooses a kind of positional move, clamping down on b5. g4 in this position has been seen before without a4. For example, knight e5. This uh, continuation looks quite aggressive for white. And uh, it could end up being very promising. This this kind of thing, it's very, very promising. Uh, this has actually all been seen before in a game Fadge against Zambor in an ICF email correspondence game. So uh, so that that's an interesting thing to just, just consider G4 straight off the bat. But A4 was played. Uh, and we have B6. G4 now. Now with the queen on f3, this looks awkward with g4 in a way, tactically, and Leela tries to underline that with d5, trying to have an exploitation on this diagonal for the queen and rook. We have e takes, bishop b7, bishop f4 hitting black's queen. The queen just steps back to c8, so maintaining that pinned pawn. Now Stockfish castles kingside, and we have bishop c5. On knight takes d5, you might ask. Knight takes, bishop takes. Bishop can hit the queen. The queen goes to h3. This position seems about even. Uh, it does seem fairly sensible for black to play like this. Uh, we have bishop c5, though. Uh, now queen e3. So unpinning and now threatening something like d takes, potentially. We have knight takes d5, knight takes. Bishop takes and Stockfish gets mega aggressive here with b4, offering a pawn. c4 is also pretty scary, uh, but perhaps after bishop b7, b4, bishop can drop back, doesn't have to take on b4. And c c5, for example, b takes, uh, b takes, knight takes. This position, there's a lot of positional pressure, but black might actually have technically an edge because white has always got to be cautious about this weakened diagonal with the king there it's a bit unsafe some of these squares fundamentally uh, so yeah that kind of restricts white's advantage and possibilities sometimes this diagonal so we have a very energetic b4 straight off the bat though without c4 first and actually Leela takes this uh, yeah it's scary because yeah, Leela just needs a draw uh, if the bishop had dropped back, and say we have c4, bishop b7, rook a d1. Actually, this is also a little bit scary if black castles here. Knight takes is a bit scary. But as I say, white's kind of been put in check, so to speak, with this diagonal. And here, queen c6 is a good move, hitting the knight and threatening queen h1 checkmate. So for example, rook d5 taking this continuation can actually lead to a spectacular queen sack where it seems as though it might be dynamically equal. 
Uh, so yeah, that that is interesting, uh, to say the least. Uh, so if the bishop just drops back, yeah, this knight takes. If f takes here, this is asking for trouble actually. Rook takes d7, white's getting a big advantage. So this diagonal is a key diagonal for black to use at the moment because of that g4 move. Um, we have though this pawn set, bishop takes b4, c4, the bishop drops back to b7, and now this looks extremely scary for all Leela fans. I think this is our worst nightmare position just to need a draw and have this position from a Sicilian defense with the king still in the center and all we needed was a draw basically <laughs> is black getting absolutely smashed the smithereens that's the question to ask really so Leela has to kind of take this uh, <laughs> queen takes e6 check and the bishop goes to e7 here it's absolutely razor sharp so black this extra piece but the king in the center if king f8 it seems c5 here is extremely dangerous breaking the connection of the bishop on this diagonal threatening bishop d6 checkmate uh, so say knight takes c5 bishop d6 is checkmate say bishop takes c5 bishop d6 is still strong in this continuation uh, with the king in the center it just looks terrifying and it is pretty bad here for example like this white getting the piece back and the king's still in trouble and black can end up getting mated for example like this the fictional continuation on queen takes c5 instead then queen takes queen c6 thing mate but this is actually favorable for white so all in all in a nutshell uh king f8 is not to be advised it seemed uh, based on the analysis here as an example you can get the idea that maybe king f8 because of c5 is super dangerous for black so we have bishop e7 bishop d6 and now queen d8 is played not much else rook f d1 now here rook f8 there might be an option for knight f8 this might be possible for example queen e3 knight g6 c5 is dangerous say queen d7 or kb1 queen c6 striking on this diagonal and this continuation shows that maybe uh yeah there's some play for black here based on f3 based on the diagonal so if bishop e4 taking here this is very interesting very very dynamic but it should be about even so that does seem to be a legitimate try knight f8 but in the game we have rook f8 now g5 is played which opens up this diagonal for the bishop yes it's pretty scary uh, at this critical juncture there has been some talk about c5 and this opens up all sorts of lines and diagonals c file diagonals and it does seem as though from my analysis limited analysis this could guarantee white an advantage at least for example rook f6 check it's razor sharp but c6 if takes bishop e5 hitting the queen bishop d6 takes it's pretty deep stuff bishop f3 uh, now here if rook takes rook takes bishop takes then check not winning the queen but check and white drives the king over here and it turns out this position is very favorable for white this is a very very long forcing sequence and you have to evaluate after but it seems as though even though black's got the extra piece white's doing really well and the piece could end up being lost so c5 as one example seems to be quite promising uh, if we just go back here uh, somehow <clears throat> so c5 let's have a look at this again so I mentioned rook f6 and queen g8 knight f8 just uh, show rook f8 then queen e6 this is just so dangerous because of this diagonal that's been opened up by c5 so for example like this is nasty yeah taking on g8 blacks uh, getting done over here White's getting a big advantage. 
so yeah, if we look at these lines, they're all pretty dangerous. Uh, and um, let's just show something else on instead of bishop d6 here in this main line, if queen c8, bishop takes f6, rook e1, the king in the center is scary. Well, it's getting a big advantage there. Uh, and we we saw bishop d6, bishop takes, and I mentioned rook takes d6, bishop f3. I mentioned rook takes d1 earlier. If bishop takes f3 here, funny enough, white has rook e1 check. Driving the king is actually, it seems, a better bet. And winning the queen. Uh, this is just going to be very good for white. So yeah, there does seem to be a lot of advantageous lines to do with c5 here. And it seems remarkably in the game continuation. Okay, let's see what happened in the game continuation. Rook f7, bishop h5, g6, bishop g4. Yeah, the king's horribly <laughs> incensed, but at least you know there's a potential walk over here now with f8 being vacated, which is used. King f8. Black's prepared to give this piece back, but Stockfish is not yet taking the piece back. It's just torturing on the b file first. And Leela clamps down on a5 from white, believe it or not. If uh, King G8 was played, then Bishop takes E7, Rook takes. This end game could be slightly favourable to White with A5 being played. This could lead to a big advantage for White. So it's good to clamp down on A5 for White to stop White doing that. Bishop G3, getting ready to take that piece back. Bishop A3 looks a bit weird. I'm surprised by this move in the live broadcast, but. Uh, Stockfish just played check to get rid of that bishop anyway. And now of the queen e7. We have simplification and we're heading towards, it seems, a rook and pawn ending. So after the terrifying position now, bishop f3 is played. And we're transitioning, it seems, very rapidly to a drawish looking endgame all of a sudden. To the delight of Leela fans. Uh, the bluefish evaluation is available at TSEC, which is much deeper. And it was starting to think it was about equal, and this was reassuring. So I was popping out to get sandwiches and then checking on my iPhone the position, <laughs> etc. And I was just happy that it didn't seem totally lost for black. There was some hope of a draw. Now, here, in fact, white, if white was a human, might consider rook d3. But that runs into bishop e4, just skewing the rooks, and black ends up with a big advantage. So uh, the rook went to d6. D4 is also possible, or D2, but D6 is fine. So here, Rook D8, check. And now Bishop C6, really inviting a Rook and Pawn ending. There's a Tarash saying, uh, sort of cheeky, all Rook and Pawn endings are drawn, which has some truth in it, because sometimes Rooks can really get behind past Pawns, the Tarash rule, so to speak, to stop a past Pawn. Now, we, we really are transitioning into a Rook and Pawn ending. If White had tried to keep the Bishop, it seems rook f7, this position is fine for black anyway. White's only got a small edge here. Uh, yeah, this earlier g4 is pretty committal even for end games. It's, it's weaknesses for the king. That means the rook's kind of tied down at the moment. So anyway, we have bishop c6, which invites this rook and pawn ending. And now Leela fans, I think, we're getting less worried about this. We have rook f6, rook takes, rook takes. Rook a2. So, okay, for the moment, white's two pawns up, but a4 is dropping, so only one pawn up. And the Tarash rule, if this pawn's ever pushed, the Tarash rule getting the, the rook behind the past pawn is pretty powerful concept for these rook and pawn endings, which which is why I feel, yeah, it's not just a funny saying. It, there is some truth in it. And Stockford gives up the c4 for a3. And this is just basically a table-based draw. For some weird reason, Stockfish evaluated it for a long time as at least 0 0.30 for white. I thought it would sort of assume it's table-based draw, but we had quite a lot of moves played from here. Yeah, all of these checks, etc. All of this played. And we were just hoping, I think, a lot of us that Leader wouldn't crash for the first time in the tournament because that would be an unfortunate, tragic <laughs> event not to be able to qualify for the super final. 
but uh, thankfully Leela wasn't going to crash for the first time in the tournament so all things well this should be a drawn rook and pawn ending and here it was finally draw adjudicated both engines for it was absolutely drawn so congratulations to the Leela team all Leela fans we've got a mighty networks in the pipeline and there's a TSEC cup at the moment to delay things even more for that final super final clash which I've coined <laughs> computer chess match of the century I believe in my view the clash of the neural network technology with alpha beta net, uh, alpha beta search technology computer chess match of the century coming up in TSEC it's going to be fantastic uh, there's an exhibition trying to recreate Alpha Zero versus Stockfish 8 at the moment as well uh, before this TSEC Cup. But then after the TSEC Cup, yeah, super final. I hope you enjoyed this game video. If you did, please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly. Become a member at chessworld.net. Play against other YouTubers. You can also check out the YouTube analysis in advance of these games from the improved menu learn from the Masters youtube order button full members can export all the pgn all my annotated pgn i've ever done so great incentive to become a full member there <laughs> okay uh comments questions donations see the description like share subscribe with the notification bell appreciated thanks very much